Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone that you're in. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and give him praise. Well, it's Friday, so it's got to be fantastic. Hallelujah. We love you. We thank God for you. Hello, Kimberly in San Diego, California. I have preached more in San Diego, California, and in Tijuana, Mexico, those two places more than any other place in the world. That's right. So those two places have been good to me. God has blessed me in those places. And we thank God for those beautiful people there. Continue to pray for our nation. Ay, ay, ay. That God would send a revival. Hello, Carlos. And that lives would be changed from the inside out. I'm going to be sharing with you something very, very different today that I know is going to bless your heart. It's been a real eye opener to me, and I trust that God will bless this time as I share this message with you. Now, as you can tell, I am white. I can get a nice tan when I go to the tanning booth or go to the beach. I love to get a suntan and get nice and brown. I enjoy that, but predominantly on my uh, driver's license, I'm Caucasian, all right? And so, but I cannot change the color of my skin whatsoever. I can try to get it a little more brown, but on my birth certificate, it says that I am Caucasian. I cannot change that. That's impossible. Hello, Jessica. Here is a word from the word. Jeremiah 13, 23 says this. Can an Ethiopian change his skin or a leopard his spots? So here is that man. He is black. Here is the leopard with all the different spots. He cannot change that. That's what the Bible says. Cannot change his skin. Then may you also do good who are accustomed to do evil. So we can change the color of our skin. We cannot change if I'm a leopard. I cannot get the spots out. But as a human being, then you also do good who are accustomed to do evil. Now, let me share some things with you. I have been in Mobile, Alabama, 24, 25 years ago. I'm sure maybe longer. My wife had a garage sale because she was selling all the stuff. And we're moving to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. She got the U-Haul, put it all together, had cash went to the hotel to spend the night and three black men came and grabbed my two daughters and put a pistol to their neck and said to Ramona, give me your purse. Ramona looked at them and said to them, I'm not going to give you my purse because there's documents in there that are no good to you, but I have cash in my purse. I'm going to place my hand and take out the cash and give it to you. They said, okay, 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 okay. So she gave them the cash and they ran away into the dark. That left Ramona with no money for gas, for lodging, to drive all the way from Mobile, Alabama to Phoenix, Arizona. They were black people. I cannot change their color. I could say, well, I'm going to be angry with those black people because they almost killed my family. But I cannot change the color of their skin. I cannot change the color of my skin. The only thing that I can change is my heart. And that day, with no problem whatsoever, we forgave those black young men. They could have been white. They could have been purple. But in this situation, they were black. So we made a decision not to be angry at these black people and say, well, all blacks are murderers. No, that's not even close. But you want to hear a miracle? 
my wife, with no money in the bank, stuck her ATM card into the bank and money came out. And she was able to make the trip to Phoenix, Arizona. I cannot change the color of your sin of your of your skin, sir or lady. You cannot change mine. The only thing that I can change is my heart towards you. I was every time I go to a, a Mexican church, you know, oh Prophet Gordon, Pasele, Pasele, we missed you. Oh, ay, 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 mama, they give me a hug and they love me. But I walked into this one Mexican church and the and the uh, uh, the, the usher was just very cold to me. Whoosh. You know, he didn't say, I'm glad to have you here or nothing, you know. I thought, wow, what's wrong with this guy, you know? I'm going to check his papers, see if he's legal. And the Holy Spirit says, stop. Go in the bathroom and look at your eyes. I said, I don't have to. I know they're blue. He said, go and look at your skin. What color? I said, it's, you know, it's, I'm white. I'm a white guy. And he said, the reason he's treating you this way is that there were some white people that mistreated him. So because of the color of your skin, he thinks everybody's that way, and he's not forgiven those other people that treated him bad who were white. So I said, I'm going to change that. And I began to be his friend, and I complimented him behind the pulpit, a true compliment, and said, your usher is doing such a great job for me. If I need something, he's right there. By the end of that three-day crusade, he was my best friend. And every time I would go back to that church, he would embrace me. You see, I cannot change the color of my skin, but I can change my heart towards those who have done me wrong from a different color. All right? I cannot... You can't, this guy can never change the color of his skin. This leopard, he's going to have spots for the rest of his life. Can't change it. But I can change my heart. That's what God's trying to tell us in this whole situation. I remember I was in uh, preaching in a reservation in South Dakota. And it was during the wounded knee uh, uprising. And I was with the missionary. And... Um, but he, he went into the store and left me alone in, in Mission, South Dakota. And I'm standing there by myself, you know. And about 10 Native American dudes started coming towards me. Now, I knew they did not want to smoke the peace pipe. I mean, these guys, I could tell in my spirit, they're, they're, they are not the welcoming committee. And thank God the missionary came out of the door, saw what was happening, that these guys were going to do me physical harm. And there were many of them and they could have done it. And he said something in the Sioux language and those guys just turned around. I begged him. I said, please tell me, let me, let me memorize that sentence that you said to these guys. They wouldn't do it. Listen to me. I cannot change the color of their skin. Only Jesus Christ can change our hearts. And so I was preaching in Tijuana, Mexico, having, having tacos with the pastor after the service. That's one of the highlights of the night is to preach a great sermon, have a great service, and then go out for some great tacos. Hallelujah. Gracias, Señor. Woo, santo. Oh, yes. That's wonderful. So we went out there and we're eating tacos, you know, and the pickup truck of my pastor was right there. I mean, I could have threw a rock at it, you know, and we were eating tacos, you know, and he didn't have an alarm system on his truck. And wouldn't you know it, somebody in Tijuana, Mexico, and I'm only just guessing that it's a Mexican, you know, and you say, well, how do you know that? Well, the percentage is pretty high. I'm in Tijuana, Mexico. And so they broke into the truck. They stole some stuff from him. They stole my nice briefcase with a nice Bible with my sermon notes and a brand new camera. Just haven't even used it. Brand new. They stole it. So what am I going to have to do? Am I going to have to say that all Mexicans are thieves? No. I cannot change that guy's skin. He cannot change my skin, but I can change my heart. But check this out. I go home that night 
uh, to, to my house that I stay in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, San Diego, California. The pastor's wife comes up to me. She doesn't know nothing. She comes up to me and she says to me, she said, three days ago, the Lord said for me to buy you a briefcase. And I said to the Lord, he already has one. And the Lord says, no, buy him a briefcase. So she bought me a briefcase. I walk in. She says to me, where's your briefcase? I said, some person, I think it was a Mexican, stole it. She starts crying. She goes to her room. She said, three days ago, the Lord told me to buy you a briefcase. So one Mexican stole it, but another Mexican redeemed it. Woo! Why did that Mexican lady redeem it? Because it wasn't the color of my skin or the color of her skin. It was the condition of her heart. I've had the privilege of preaching in all kinds of different churches. I preached to this one black church. They gave me a check. The church, the, the check bounced. I called them up and said, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm talking to them, you know. I'm hoping they're going to say, oh, pastor, we got the check back. We feel so bad. We're so embarrassed. Please forgive us, you know. We're sending you a new one. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And so I finally said, oh, you know, the, that check that you, you, you gave me, uh, it uh, had a little problem with it. It bounced. And I dealt with the two pastors from two different situations. One was a check for 200, and the other was a check for 400. And both pastors said, well, that's the way it goes. And they hung up on me. Now, I had a choice. Do I be mad at those black pastors because they took me for a ride, you know, and they didn't take care of it? I want to tell you something right now. I believe had I had any animosity towards those people, I would have blocked the friendship that I have with many black people that give to my ministry and have blessed my life. I believe, this is my conviction, I believe had I not forgiven those guys and blessed them and went on, that the black community would not be giving to me this day and blessing my life. Could it be that somebody of a different color hurt you, did something wrong to you, and it was all their fault, you were innocent, but because you have not forgiven them and blessed them, God, there's a wall there and you won't be able to minister or to receive from them. Listen, I can't change, he cannot change the color of his skin. This leopard cannot change that. I, the only thing I can do is change my heart. Change my heart. That's the only thing that I can do. I cannot change my skin, but I can change my heart. What would happen in this nation? Now, have been black people been mistreated by white people? The answer to that is yes. Have Native American people been mistreated because of people of white skin? The answer once again is yes. Have Mexican people been mistreated and taken advantage because of white people? The answer, I'm sorry to say, is yes. The only thing you can do, you cannot change the color of my skin or the color of my eyes. The only thing that you can do is change your heart. What would happen, ladies and gentlemen? I know it's a fairy tale. But what would happen if everybody in this nation wouldn't look at the skin, but would look at a changed heart? I remember I was going through a Navajo reservation and I was going through there, I stopped for a soda. As I was getting out, I'm always watching as I travel. I always look over my situation. I saw these about four or five young uh, Navajo uh, young men standing there. And once again, <laughs> because of the color of my skin and the color of my eyes, I got a soda and got out of there because these, these, these guys was not the welcome committee. And it was all because of the color of my skin. White people have done the same thing with black people or brown people. I'm so sick of it. You can have... 
You can have all kinds of meetings about, oh, we're going to have this meeting, you know, we're going to get together with everybody, you know, and we're going to have this meeting, you know. And, you know, they're trying. But until my heart and until your heart is changed, it'll never, ever work. I cannot change your skin, sir. I cannot change mine. But I can change my heart about you. And you can change your heart about me. Listen to me. I'm so moved by this message. I'm so moved with this message. In Ezekiel 36, 26, Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put in a new spirit. Yes, in a black man, in a white man, in a brown man. You know what's crazy? The people that hate me, because of, they just hate me because of my color. If they were dying and they were running out of blood and they said to me, hey, I want to hook you up to this dude. You can save him. <laughs> I would do it in a second. And my blood would go into that black man's blood and save his life. My God, have mercy. Don't you know that God looks down on this situation and says, come on, gang, what in the world is wrong with you? Ezekiel 12, 36, 26. Moreover, I will give you a new heart. That's what we need in America. I'll put in a new spirit within you and I will remove the heart of stone from you in flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Give you a soft heart. Yes. Psalms 51, 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. We don't have a color problem in this world, in this nation. We have a heart problem. If my heart's right, I can look at a black man or a brown man and love him unreservedly. Because my heart's right. My heart's right. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19. And I will give them one heart. Oh, wow. And put a new spirit within them. And I will take away the heart of the flesh. I'll give them a new heart. Wow. I'll always be white. I can't change it. I'll always have blue eyes. Can't change it. This guy will die black or live black. This leopard will always have those spots. Can't change it. Only thing I can change is my heart. And I'm begging the Christian community, if you've got prejudice, come on now. I would rather go to heaven with a black man than go to hell with one. It would be horrible. And I plan to go to heaven with a lot of black folks. My first missionary trip was to Jamaica. I met a fifth grade teacher there. She was a beautiful black woman. I said to her, what grade do you teach? She said, the fifth grade. I said, I'll be there in the morning. <laughs> I told her if I was a kid, I would flunk the fifth grade for the rest of my life just to be in the same room with you. She started laughing and cackling. There's so many beautiful people in all colors. If God just made white people, I've said it a thousand times, this world would be boring. You can take a chicken to a white guy's house. He'll fix it. You take a chicken to a Korean, it'll be done different. You take a chicken to a Mexican, it'll be done different. You take a chicken to a black, black home, it'll be done different. Same chicken. Because the variety. If God did not love variety, he would have made all black people and all of us would be black. He said, that's my favorite color. So everybody's going to be black. No. He said, I want to make everybody brown. No. I want to make everybody white. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. You know, no. And now, okay, the people are, you know, some of the folks are, are we want to take down the white Jesus statues, you know. Because Jesus was brown, he was black, he was Korean, you know. I don't care. You pick it out, whichever one you like. If you want to have a black Jesus, fine with me, no problem. You want a white Jesus, no problem. You want to have a brown Jesus, no problem. I, his skin did not save me. 
It was his blood. And that's what I'm after. I'm not after the color of the skin of Jesus. I am after his blood that redeemed me and forgave me of all of my sins. That's what I'm after. He ain't gonna change. The leopard he ain't gonna change. Only thing I can change is my heart. Ask God to create a clean heart inside of you. And if anybody of color that has done you wrong, you need to forgive them. I would rather go to heaven with a black man than to go to hell with a black man because I didn't forgive. Amen. Does that make sense? I hope you hear my heart and not my skin. Okay. Father in heaven, I'm asking you to heal this nation. I'm asking, Father, that you would send your Holy Spirit. God, that you'd bring healing to this nation in Jesus' name. That you'd bring healing with the blacks and the whites and the browns, Lord, oh God. Bring healing in Jesus' name. And I bind that spirit of racial tension. I bind that spirit in Jesus' name. I bind that spirit of hatred in Jesus' name. I take authority over it now in Jesus' name and I bind that spirit of hatred in the name of Jesus. And I pray for a miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me tell you one story before I go. I was somewhere in the deep part of Mexico at a convention. During the meetings, we just went out for a walk to look at the community. And here was a lady in the corner. She was selling tortillas. I can't pronounce it right. I'd only seen the white ones, you know. But there I saw red and purple and different colors, you know, of corn, you know. And they made it into a tortilla. And I, I was just, you know... And I, I had to, I wanted to buy some. And I, I guess the Mexican lady, she saw that, oh, this gringo has never seen one of these before. <laughs> and she would not let me pay for it. I said, I got, no, I have money. I have pesos. No, 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 no. I am so happy. She said through the interpreter, I'm so happy that I was the first one to ever give you a colored tortilla. So I said, whatever makes you happy. I've been in Mexican homes where they feed me tacos, enchiladas, pasole, no manudo, por favor. And I have learned from the Mexican people hospitality. They usually, when they usually come to somebody's house, they usually bring a gift of some kind. White people just show up. <laughs> What I'm trying to tell you, we can learn. Hey, listen to me. Let's take the good part of the black people. Let's take the good part of the brown people, the white people, and let's say, I'm going to, wow, we could use that. We could use that in our society. Well, well hey, we could, yeah, come on. Well, we love you so much. And I want to thank people from different skin colors who have given me checks who have sent them in the mail, who have put it on PayPal, who put it on Zelly. People of different colors have blessed my life. You have a choice. What are you going to do? There's only one thing you can do, and that's change your heart. Can't change my skin. Always going to be this way. This guy cannot change his skin. But he can change his heart. Amen. Father in heaven, I bless every one of my listeners today. And Father, if we hold any malice towards any race, help us, God, to forgive 
and to bless in Jesus' name. Please take this message to prayer. I believe it is one of the best messages. Maybe it was just for me, but I believe it was the, a message that if we will grab it, our life will be changed. I want to challenge you to share this message that you heard today with as many people that you can because I believe God's going to deliver them and set them free in Jesus' name. One last thing, I have more house keys to Mexican houses. They just give me the key. Whenever you're in town, just knock and <laughs> come in, you know. <laughs> I always call them three or four days ahead, but they give me their keys. They don't want the keys back, and I have them. I have the keys to about two or three houses in San Diego. Well, that's how rich I am. I have houses in San Diego, and I don't pay any payments nor taxes. That's how rich I am. And I have these keys to these houses in my car. And when I go to San Diego, I have a choice where I can stay. I am so blessed. I'm so blessed. One last thing. I stayed in this Mexican house, found out I had a problem, and I needed an operation and gallbladder operation. So I went there. Ramona was not there. I said, don't, don't come. I mean, because I'm coming home in two or three days. I went there, had the operation. Some, a Mexican family had someone sitting beside my bed 24 hours a day. Some Mexican was sitting beside my bed, making sure that I was going to be taken care of. Then when I got out of the hospital, they picked me up, and I went and stayed in their house for two or three days. And I said, I, I'm ready to go home now. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I feel good. I can go home now. And I said, I'll drive from San Diego to Brawley, and I'll spend the night in Brawley, to make sure I'm rested and stuff, and then I'll make the rest of the trip. I said, okay. But they said, we will follow you out of the city to make sure that you get on Interstate 8 and that you're okay. They escorted me out of San Diego to make sure that the white guy with blue eyes was okay. I'm out of here. I love you guys. Thanks for praying for me, and thanks for giving to the ministry. Bye-bye.